Hey folks, and welcome to a special Mermay video. And for those of you who don't know, Mermay is a drawing challenge, sort of like Inktober, the challenge where you spend the 31 days of October drawing 31 different ink drawings, except it's in May and you draw mermaids instead. Uh, I fudge that a bit, obviously. I'm drawing a merman. This is Steve of the Sea. He's a little character I recycled from my sketchbook for this. Because I wanted to do something uh, kind of cute and just have some fun with it, and I really like his design. I like that he's he's a fuzzy little ginger merman, and we'll see some more of that as I get into this. And plus, I wanted to practice some things I learned recently, namely uh, blending and using uh, watercolor to create and render skin tone. So as soon as I'm done inking here, we're going to see a little bit of that, and maybe I'll go into some more detail detail on that in the future, what it is I'm doing and how I got there. But for now, let's just see how it works, and I'll explain a little bit of it as it goes. Alright, so here I'm starting the skin tones, and what I'm doing, I've got my the tone I want to use mixed up, and I'm going to start light, of course, uh, like I always do, like you do, work light to dark. And I'm going to start laying in heavier amounts of tone at the higher tonal areas of the skin, and then work work that paint out into more lighter blended layers. So when I say high tonal areas, I mean areas that where the uh, where the, the skin tone is going to be very intense. Shadows, uh, where skin meets, uh, where there might be blush spots. Anywhere where if you look at skin, you're going to see more of the color and less reflection of the light around it. So in this case, shoulders, um, anywhere there's shadows, like I said, and uh, blush spots. But what I'm doing to achieve this effect is taking um, concentrated washes, laying a, like a like an edge or a rim, and then coming back with a lighter wash, or sometimes straight up water and pushing it out, blending it out, wiping it further away from the original shadow with a wet brush. Now I didn't learn to do this effect until very recently, and honestly, the idea of rendering skin tone in watercolor was pretty intimidating. I've done it a little bit in the past with Copics where uh, getting the color in the first place isn't that bad, and the Copic color coding system makes it really easy to determine what shade you're using and what saturation it is, etc, etc. There's a lot less guesswork involved. But uh, I learned that doing rendering skin with watercolor is actually quite simple once you have the tone you want to use down. Basically just do what I'm doing right here, lay it down and blend it out. and. It was deceptively scary before I dove in, but I'm happy to report that once you give it a shot, it becomes really easy really quickly. And of course this isn't perfect, this is one of my first attempts at it, but it's only going to get easier, just like anything else you do. You just try, and you keep practicing, and it just starts to make sense. Now as you can see, when I'm working on rounder parts of uh, his body, like his bicep and the underside of his chest and his hands there. Darker, less reflective spots get more tone. Now here's another thing I wanted to work on. I wanted to take a shot at rendering hair in a more realistic but still cartoony but less simplistic way. So what I'm doing, because he's a he's a little ginger merman, is I'm starting with a very light yellow to accomplish the highlights of his hair. And then I'm going in with progressively darker and darker shades of yellow, orange, and red-ish colors to define the curls and the texture in his hair, and to show where shadows and more rich colors are. And again, uh, back, I'm working on the skin a little more, I'm adding in darker, more high contrast areas because, first of all, I always decide I don't have enough contrast and I need more contrast, but it's, uh, it's also good to work in layers, especially, um, especially with what I'm doing here. You cannot lay a new layer on top of an old layer before it starts to dry. If you do that, you don't get um, blending, you just get mixing and the detail is lost. Focus disappears and it starts to look really bad and you don't get these nice sharp distinct lines and layers like I'm getting in the hair and the curls there. Like I, if I were to lay those little whisker hairs on a wet layer, they would just disappear. They would bleed out into the water that's still in the paper. So that's why I'm jumping back and forth between like hair and skin and hair and skin. I always laugh when I see video of myself drawing nipples because nipples are funny. And if you say they're not, then it's okay, but you're wrong. 
So I'm doing something with the tail that I also did with the hair here. The tail is not going to be this light yellowish green color, but that will be the color of some of the highlights and the more underbelly color. So I'm laying that color in first to come back and lay darker greens over top of it. And again, I'm jumping back and forth between areas in the painting here for the same reasons as before. You can't work wet layers onto wet layers if you want them to remain distinct or if you want them to behave in the way I'm trying to get them to behave. It's not that you can't work wet on wet, but I don't want to here, so I'm not going to, and you can't make me. So here I'm just using that dark green to be the shadow, sort of opposite of how I use the skin, where I started dark and blended out to light like that. I'm starting light and blending the dark out into the light. I know it's not exactly opposite, but there's, it, it, there's, it, it's a little analogous. And it achieves the effect I want, where I have these uh, nice dark green spots sitting in counterpoint to the bright yellow spots, and, and they blend smoothly instead of looking like separated layers that I just like slopped on with a marker or just did without any blending at all. And the, the tail fin is just a combination of all the colors I've used so far, and what I'm going to do is lay in these small little uh, lines, and then come back and cover them with a lighter wash and sort of blend them together to just give an impression that all of the colors are present without being too delineated. So here I'm working on the background and I wanted it to be more than just like a blue-green plain wash to show ooh, a little bit of water. So what I'm going to do is lay in a few, uh, sort of a lot of few, blades of like undersea seaweed, kelp, grassy stuff. And I'm going to do the same thing I did in my Lotus video, if you haven't watched that, where I use lighter colors to push objects further and further in the background. So I'm using light, muddy colors, less saturated colors at first to make things look far away, and then I'm going to make the colors darker to bring things forward. Like you'll see here, I went from like light yellow green to mid earthy green to this sort of bright grassy green right here. And as I was doing them, they started to get a little overwhelming, like too busy in the background, so I started, um, blending color in the foreground down in the corners, making it darker, maybe making it look a little more shadowy, just to sort of soften the focus and take some of the detail away from those blades of seaweed without making them disappear so that they can sort of fade to the back and just be present without being overpowering. Alright folks, here he is, Steve of the Sea. I hope you enjoyed watching that, I always enjoy making these, and if you want to see more like that, be sure to subscribe, hit the little bell so you know when new stuff happens, and if you want to see what I'm doing when I'm not making these videos, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Terminal.Lazy, that's just like the channel name but with a little dot in the middle, and follow me on Twitter at TerminalLazy, that's just like the channel name, all one word. Thanks for hanging out, and I hope to see you next time. Bye guys!